Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome to my booth. I'm Jay, and today I'm going to talk about root mean squared, RMS, and loudness, specifically how to adjust it in Adobe Audition. This was a question sent in by Robert the Suave. Uh, if you've got questions like this, send them my way, and I'll get to them as I can. Let's dive right in. So I've got Adobe Audition open here, and I've got two samples of the same classic Winnie the Pooh sentence that I use in a lot of my recordings here. The first one, I used a sort of vocal measured even volume through the entire performance to give us sort of a nice even waveform. And then the second one here, I was a little bit less measured and controlled in my vocal performance. So I had loud moments, I had very quiet moments, just to give a little bit more range so we can see the difference of RMS. So there are a couple of things that you can do in Adobe Audition to give you an idea of where you're starting and where you need to go. I just want to talk about a couple differences of how we measure loudness and volume levels in audio. The first is RMS or root mean squared. It's a mathematical thing that to be perfectly honest, I don't feel comfortable articulating to you all just because I don't understand it as deeply as a true blue audio engineer might. But to be very reductive about it, it measures the loudness average of the whole audio track. And that's across all frequencies, just measuring straight average. There is another measure called LUFS, which sort of accounts for the variable frequencies in a recording as they are perceived by human beings. So the one way you can think of it is uh, if you're standing next to a jackhammer or a low rumbling train versus a fire alarm, your experience of the loudness of those two things is somewhat different. And the fire alarm, at least in my experience, or sirens in here in New York City, those can be perceived in my hearing as louder just because they have different frequencies than the low rumble of a subway train in terms of loudness. So that's RMS versus loudness. RMS doesn't care about frequency. LUFS kind of does. And then there is peak and true peak. The difference between those two is kind of subtle. I only use peak in my uh, recordings, and that's just looking at the loudest point wherever it is in your recording, and that's the peak. That is the peak of the audio. So if I look at this second sample right here, that's the peak of my recording. So if we normalize to minus three dB, we're taking the peaks up to minus three dB. Uh, so those are the differences between those three sort of separate measuring techniques. So in Adobe Audition, there are a few different tools that help us figure out what the loudness is. The first is the easiest way to do it is to go up to this caret here, click on it, and there is mastering and analysis as well as loudness. Both will help us figure stuff out. We're just gonna jump in straight to loudness because it's the most comprehensive. So down here is the amplitude statistics window that's there naturally. And I can click on piece of audio and click scan. It'll take the whole thing, scan the whole deal and give me loudness metrics. It gives me my peak amplitude, my true peak, as well as my RMS. And uh, so in all that, I get a sense of where I'm at now. I can also highlight certain sections. As I noted here in my sample, I've got two sort of different things. I can highlight this first one that has even peaks, scan selection, and it spits out exactly what I'm working with for this section. You can do the same thing over here, highlight and scan. And that gives me what I'm working with. Now I can adjust things manually from here using effects, plugins, limiters, compressors to even things out and raise the RMS. Or I can go up here to this window, which is the match loudness. And what the way I use this, I drag whatever audio I want to adjust into that window. And then I can match to different loudness settings. These all vary in terms of what you're adjusting, what your targets are, and sort of different parameters. These top three are standard loudness measures uh, based off of different sort of broadcasting standards. 
For example, a audiobook is broadcast via different uh, distribution platforms. And those distribution platforms have regulations as to what the optimal loudness setting is. There's also uh, similar ones for film and TV. You have to optimize the loudness of your sound to a specific regulation. And those are dictated by places like the FCC and other institutions that regulate those sort of broadcasting environments. Same thing goes for radio, streaming. Uh, YouTube has recommended settings as well. And so those top three allow you to do certain uh, different things there. If you're adjusting just RMS, lucky for us, there is total RMS right here. Uh, and it gives you a target loudness of RMS. So if you need to hit a certain loudness, you just plug that in and it'll pump it out. Uh, so I drag my thing over, I set it wherever I want, and then I just click run and it'll bake that RMS into my whole audio. After I've clicked run, you'll notice that it spits out some statistics here for me where I can see exactly where everything landed after the fact. Now, one word of caution, if you're bumping your RMS using this, you'll notice that my peak values jumped pretty significantly. If we undo that loudness uh, and we look back over here at my peaks, my peaks are at minus 3.5-ish. And if I run it again, they jump up to 0.1 dB, minus 0.1 dB, which is quite a significant 3 dB jump. Additionally, if you're doing audiobooks and stuff like that, peak values here are not really going to, uh, they're not going to be up to, up to the uh, distribution standard. So what I do for audiobooks is I go into this loudness thing. Now this is LUFS, which is human perceived loudness, so it'll be slightly different than RMS. The good thing is we get to see exactly what RMS values we have up here. So if you are doing an audiobook and you're mastering it in Adobe Audition, this will be a really helpful thing to cross check. So I'll undo that loudness. And I found that a LUFS of minus 21 to minus 20.5 are good for me. And then the true peak for audiobooks, they don't want it to go above minus 3 dB. So I just set it at minus 3, or if you want to be safe, you can go minus 3.1 just to give yourself a little bit more headroom. The tolerance is just how much fluctuation from file to file, from moment to moment, it's willing to tolerate. And otherwise, it'll either boost it or compress it or limit it uh, to rest within that tolerance. I like it at a 0.5 tolerance. You can play around with it if you want. Um, and then the look ahead and release, that's just how fast the compression and limiting is working and how far in advance it's going to uh, account for things. I found I don't really need to adjust it from the standard factory settings. So we'll click run, see what happens. Boom, we've got an RMS of minus 21.5, which is only 0.5 dB less than what we did with the RMS, but the benefit of doing it with this setting is now our peak values are within the audiobook standard of minus 3 dB, which is helpful. Uh, so there you go. That's how to adjust RMS here in Adobe Audition. If you have any questions about this, either Robert the Suave or anyone else, let me know and I'll elaborate further. And if you like this stuff, you find it helpful and you think other folks might too, it's very appreciated if you're willing to take the time to click the buttons, helps other folks find us here. And if you want to support me directly, you can just buy me a coffee. Never necessary, always appreciated, but until the next one, please be well, and I'll see you there. Toodles. Toodles.